Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. <laughs> well, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Well, hello, God bless you. Listen to my feeble attempt to do a solo. Uh, Gary didn't even know I was going to open like this. Uh, a little improv uh, of, a, of the great hymn, Amazing Grace, written by that former sea captain, former slave trader, a wicked man, but he met Jesus Christ, the writer John Newton in 1772, after meeting Jesus and getting his sins washed away, leaving the, the slave trade, becoming a man of God. He wrote, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found blind, but now I see. The man's life changed. He went on to be a man of God for the rest of his days and never traded slaves again. And uh, you know, that's what happens to you when you meet, meet Jesus. He changes you. He changes your heart. He changes your mind. He changes you from the inside out. And people can see it from the outside in. And your life goes in a totally different direction than it was going in before because you've been changed. You know, we we saying, I know I've been changed. Hallelujah. And I thank God that Jesus changed lives. And my friends, I'm talking to some changed people who have been blessed by the word of God. But I want you to know that there are some sinister things going on in society today. Uh, they're trying to uh, present a, a Christianity uh, 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 where you can be a Christian and there are no changes. You can, you can find God and there are no changes. Now, let me tell you, it's, it's a very, it's a very sinister thing going, going on. And I want to, I want to show you what's behind it. And then I want to show you a modern example of it. Now, a, a recent example. Now, the Bible says this in uh, 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 Daniel chapter number seven, and he's talking about what's going to take place uh, with the Antichrist, this Antichrist, this figure who will come to prominence, this man who will be both a religious and a political figure. This is why the church has to stay involved in both. You cannot turn a deaf, a blind eye and a deaf ear to politics, and you can't turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to the church. The Antichrist will be both a political and religious figure. He will be, he will be as political as he will be religious. He will be as religious as he will be political. And, and what we're seeing is we're getting a taste, a foretaste, an introduction to how things will be when this man comes on the scene. That's why I want to say to you who are watching today, make sure you're good and saved and love Jesus Christ and get caught up in the rapture. And uh, I believe that God's going to keep us from going through the tribulation. You don't want to be here during that time. But the Bible says this about this man whom Paul referred to as the man of sin, the son of of perdition. Daniel said this about him in Daniel chapter number seven and verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the most high. He shall speak great words against the true and living God. Now, Paul said, that this uh, son of perdition will oppose all that is called God. All previously uh, established religions, he will speak against them and will declare himself as God. Jesus said that he will sit in the temple of God and declare himself as God. And this is the abomination that maketh desolate. You've heard of the, uh, the abomination desolation. There is an abominable behavior 
that will cause the uh, cause desolation in the land and religious desolation uh, in the land. Now, the Bible says this. Uh, I'm back to Daniel now, chapter number seven and verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out. He will afflict. He will wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws. He will think to change times and laws. He will change religious festivals. He will change religions. He will change the meaning of words. We see it today. You know, uh, I, I, I see it even in politics. You know, people say uh, so-and-so is extreme on abortion. Now, to be called extreme on abortion. You're talking about the Antichrist changing times and changing meanings. Uh, that, when they say you are extreme on abortion, that means that you're fighting abortion altogether. You're trying to keep a baby from being aborted regardless to how that baby was conceived. So to have the position that you think that a child should live regardless to how they're conceived and, 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 uh, and that can be some horrible ways, then you call extreme on abortion. But these people who will call you extreme on abortion because you believe that that human being should have a right to live even regardless to how it was conceived because the child itself played no role in that. There are those who call you extreme, but these same extreme people who are truly the extreme ones, they believe in abortions up to the time of birth. Whether the child is, all, all that has to be is that mama don't want the child. So kill it. It can be healthy. It can be fine. The girl, she don't have to be raped. She doesn't have anything. Up to the time of birth, these people believe in slaughtering that child. And they call people who advocate for the life of the child extreme. See, there's a game being played. There's a game being played. And I want to challenge you, my friends, to pay attention to the things that are being said and the things that are being done because these people are smart. They are wordsmiths. These people are experts at calling right wrong and wrong right. They use phrases and things that doesn't belong, that don't work. They redefine it. They lift it totally out of its context. They make it mean something that it shouldn't. And if you're not wise on it, they will have you advocating uh, for the wrong things. And you're walking away from Jesus and walking away from biblical Christianity and from the Bible while you are standing for garbage, being tricked and hoodwinked because you don't understand the play on words. Speaking of a play on words, I have something there. I just so happen to have it. Um, now, I'm going to admit that I'm not a fan. And uh, I'm going to admit that I probably, probably spent t a total in my whole life of watching him, whether he was in the news or on anything else, I probably devoted a total of five minutes. And I'm being generous with that. But uh, Don Lemon has a new book out. And the book is entitled, Of All Things I Once Was Lost. Hence, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Now, I Once Was Lost is the name of his latest work. Now, you, you, when, when John Newton wrote this, John was talking about how he met Jesus. And uh, uh, he, he left the trade, trade, the trade, the slave, excuse me, the slave trade. He left that. He lived a godly life. His life changed after he met Jesus. 
Now, these people, you know, I talked to you about Robin Roberts trying it and people apologizing. And uh, now here is Don with his new book, I Once Was Lost, in a deeply personal follow up to his number one bestseller, This Is Fire, What I Say to My Friends About Racism. That was a number one bestseller for Don. I didn't buy it. A modern media iconoclast faces a test of faith and reveals how s such tribulations can make us stronger as individuals and as a nation. So John's, Don's going to tell us how to be stronger individuals and uh, how to be a stronger nation. Renowned journalist Don Lemon always had a complicated relationship with God. He cherished the Southern Black Church. Now, that's why I'm speaking on it. I'm a part of the Southern Black Church. I'm a part of, I'm a black man. Can you tell? I'm in church. Black man in church, black church. I'm a Southerner. Can you tell? Black man in the South, in church. So, this speaks to me uh, altogether. He cherishes, <clears throat> excuse me, the Southern Black Church as uh, that he was raised in, but struggles with the fundamentalist rejection of his right, his right to exist as a, and you know I don't call him gay, as a homosexual man who wanted to marry his longtime love in a church wedding with all the traditional trimmings. You see this? You see what's going on? This is the same thing that happened to the baker in Colorado. The baker did not want to bake a cake featuring two persons of the same sex. There were other bakeries in the area, probably on the same street, more than willing to bake the cake. But those people said, no, we don't want others to do it even though there are other bakers that are, that are just as good and, and, and they can do uh, 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 just as good a job, if not better. No, we want you, the one who objects on, the, on Christian grounds. You are the one who we want to bake the cake and we're going to take you to court if you don't do it. And not to mention that one of the couples, one of the guys, the man had baked many cakes for the guy. They had a fantastic relationship. The guy along quite well. He just, the Christian baker just was not gone. He simply objected to baking a cake, showing two men uh, getting married because uh, I don't care what the Supreme Court says. God had changed his mind. A man can't marry a man. Now, Amer America, you can, in the civil laws, y'all can give out uh, license and call it what you want. You can recognize it. But I call it what it is. It's a mess. It's antichrist and it's wrong. So here is, here is Don. Don wanted to get married, uh, 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 but he wanted to get married in a church. He wanted all the traditional trimmings. Now, why do you want the traditional trimming, but you don't want a traditional, <laughs> why? <coughs> Excuse me. You don't want a traditional wife. If you want, if you want traditional, it can't be traditional if two guys are standing there. It can't. But, you know, let me go on and read his work as a reporter. Moreover, he saw his fellow Americans losing faith in a higher power in institutions and in each other, setting out to understand uh, the place that religion has in our lives today. Don turned journalistic turned a journalistic eye on an ancient on ancient stories and found connections that sparked memories, conversations, and chance encounters. Then suddenly his world unraveled in a blaze of inglorious headlines. Don was ousted uh, from his high profile work um, network news job and uh, tasked with redefining his role in the shifting media landscape. So this book is written by Don and rich, uh, rich with humor and Louis, Louisiana realness. I once was lost is a prayer for a country to reflect the multifaceted image of God 
and a clarion call to those who believe in our common humanity enough to fight for it. So now we got a multifaceted image of God. See, that's the problem. That's the spirit of Antichrist trying to change the law. This is one poor soul who needs Jesus, who I'm praying for, and I pray that he gets born again. But what is behind this poor soul is the spirit of Antichrist that John, the writer, said was already in the world. I have right here, a major school district won't allow students to opt out of LBGTQ plus lessons, regardless of parents' wishes. A Colorado school district district is implementing a LGBTQ plus toolkit that will force students to attend lessons on related topics, even if their families disapprove. Now the folk in Denver have lost their minds. This is wrong, this is wrong, this is ungodly, and I pray that the parents do not take it lying down if you have to pull your kids out. Whatever you have to do, don't go along with this. What is the point? Satan is using this vehicle, my friends. I've seen it, I've said it, I've talked about it for years. A lifestyle that cannot coexist with biblical Christianity is the LBGTQ plus lifestyle. I'm getting my tongue tied. There's so many alphabets now, and probably next week they'll be added another one. But I'm here to tell you that God has not changed and the Bible has not changed. And yes, Jesus saves people and Jesus will save Don Lemon. Jesus will save anyone who wants to be saved. But when you get saved, there are certain qualifiers. When the Lord washes you clean, certain things do take place in your heart and in your mind. Paul says, this in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse 9, and I'm going to wrap this up because I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here tonight at the upper room. I'm talking long, but in talking long, this is not a sign that I won't be at the church. I will be here tonight. Now, he says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, male prostitutes, those who practice uh, uh, sex outside the bonds of marriage, uh, neither uh, fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, do you see this? Nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. I could talk to you for the rest of the day about what, a, what effeminate is. The effeminate is a feminine male. The effeminate is the homosexual who gets poked. The effeminate <coughs> is men who dress in women's apparel and all of these things. And some men are effeminate, but they're not homosexual. And yet the Bible says the effeminate is not going to inherit the kingdom of God, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That is the, the homosexual who is, he, I guess he's the one who's on top. What a wicked lifestyle. He's going to hell. He says, neither thieves, look at this, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, that is insulters, nor extortioners, listen business community, extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But here's the point I want to get to. Here's the point. And such were some of you, but now you are washed, but you are sanctified. You are justified in the name of Jesus uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. See, when you meet Jesus, you change. When Don truly gets found, he'll walk out of that marriage with that man that he's in. Because you can't be born again, whether I don't care if it's Don Lemon, Robin Roberts, or whomever, you can't be born again and know Jesus and practice biblical Christianity married to a member of the same sex. It cannot be done. And we're not going to just stand by and let these people 
redefine Christianity, redefine what it means. The first thing Jesus did when they asked him about who's qualified to marry, the Pharisees, Matthew chapter 19, verse 3, the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Notice, is our, notice our Lord's response, and I'll bring this to a close. Our Lord says, and he answered and said unto them, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? That's the, that's the qualifier. That, that, that has to be in place for it to even be counted as a marriage. So, I hate to say it. No, I don't. No, I don't. Still lost. Still lost. I'm going to pray for him. I'm not going to buy the book. I don't recommend that you do. I'm going, but I'm going to pray for him. I don't hate him. I'm not mad at him. But um, uh, this is, a, this is a, an, an, an attack and an assault on the church. People ask me often, and I'm wrapping this up, when, why do you talk about these things? Why don't you? That's my response. Why don't you? We live in the world. Your members have to hear about it all the time, whether it's on television, at work, at play, on the college campus, everywhere they go, at restaurants, on the plane, at the airport, everywhere people meet, people interact, people talk about things. I want to know, pastors, are, you, are your people armed with God's truth so that they can give a biblical answer to the things that are going on in society today? If they're not, you're not doing your job. Now I want you to join me tonight. I got to wrap it up. I've gone long, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I want to mention this. Uh, it has nothing to do with any of this that I've been talking about. But today, August the 29th, uh, would have been my mother's 89th birthday. And you know I'm feeling s s some kind of way about that. And then I think about this powerful, awesome, magnificent Christian doctrine, Christian truths, what the Lord has to say about those of us who go on, who leave here, who transition, who die, however you want to call it, however you want to put it. And when I think that my mother is up there with Jesus, resting with the saints, in no more pain, in no, you know, no more sickness, glory to God. She's seen Jesus. She's seen loved ones <laughs> who had gone on before. I tell you, it, it brings me joy, and and I won't mention it if, if the Lord delays coming uh, forever, you know, every, every every year about this time, but I wanted to mention it this time, and uh, it, it gives me an excellent opportunity to thank all of you for the way you prayed for us during that time, and uh, we're, we're, we're moving right along, and uh, thank you for your concern. You know I'm a mama's boy. And uh, I was a mama's boy when my mama was living, and I'm a mama's boy now. And I miss her. But when I think, many times, when the tears begin to flow, and maybe this will help someone, but when the tears begin to flow, and they do, as I think on her and uh, it, it miss her immensely, uh, what I wouldn't give to hear a prayer again. Uh, different things. What's, what's amazing is the thought that, a, that, 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 that accompanies those thoughts is yes, but she's with Jesus. Yes, but she's with the Lord. Yes, she's where she wanted to be. My mama told me uh, before she passed, she said, son, I don't know how much longer I have on this journey. And she would look at me and say, now, son, do you know what I'm talking about? I think she was constantly preparing us. And I said, yes, mama, I know, I know. Well, her journey is over. 
she made it. Glory to God. And on this August the 29th, I acknowledge uh, her and uh, I, her memory. Praise God. And I love her and cherish uh, my mother. She was our first evangelist. She told us about Jesus Christ. And I wouldn't be saved today. I wouldn't be the man that I am. I wouldn't be uh, in the church of God in Christ had my mother not brought me to this great church. And I heard a preacher, the late great James Henry Turner, preach about the living Savior, my living Lord, Jesus Christ. And so now we carry on. We carry on and we carry on in Jesus name. And part of carrying on is it, my inviting you to meet me here at the upper room church of God in Christ tonight for Bible study. <laughs> yes, we're going to study the word of God together. God's going to bless us real good. And I look forward to seeing you, you, and especially you right here tonight at the Upper Room. Thanks for joining us. God bless.